Ooh, I hope you're right about that one. I heard would have, could have, should have for the first time. Just such a happy, feel good, uplifting movie. My biggest prediction. <laughs> Tortured poet wanderer female you type. My brand new album is out April 19th. It's called the Tortured Poets Department. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Ali and today we are diving deep into our predictions for Taylor Swift's brand new album, The Tortured Poets Department. By the way, happy Tortured Poets Department release month. I can't believe April is finally here. Let's start off this department meeting by getting a show of hands of who did not realize until recently that the album title is in all capitals. <laughs> I certainly did not and that's new. I'd love to hear from you guys if you think that is a stylistic choice or has some kind of deeper meaning behind it. Stylistically, obviously red is capitalized on the original album, but like to see it written in fully all caps, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know how I didn't realize that before. It's literally been in capital letters on the album the whole time. This is me just being very brave and admitting that so that if any of you did the same thing, you can feel less alone. Now we have done videos like this before where we discuss our predictions. We did it for the Midnight's album, the Eras tour, and also a few just in between. And what I've gathered is that we need to be very careful in these videos because the amount of wild predictions that have come true is slightly alarming at this point. Like we predicted the Post Malone feature, Sabrina Carpenter opening for the Australian Eras tour like at some point I'm gonna need someone to compile everything that we have manifested because it's getting out of hand at this point. We are choosing to use our powers for good today and not evil and simply make some guesses as to what we are going to see on this album. Screaming, crying, throwing up, punch me in the face. I feel like I need to apologize for being a little bit MIA on here. <laughs> Honestly, I don't have a good reason. I just got really weirdly self-conscious. <laughs> like I was gonna say imposter syndrome, but I don't even believe that because I'm like, no, I am an imposter. <laughs> it's not the syndrome. Like I literally am an imposter. Decided that I had to get over it and here we are. So thank you for sticking with me. I feel like this time has gone so quickly. <laughs> I don't know how we've managed to talk about an album so much that isn't even out yet but that is something that I love about being an appreciator of music. <laughs> By the way, if you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Ali. I love pop culture and music and have been a lifelong Taylor Swift fan. So we tend to talk about her a lot here. Thank you to everyone that submitted your predictions for this video. These are so much fun to make. This feels fake, but I have actually never done a brand new Taylor Swift album sit down reaction video before. You know, when Midnight's dropped, I was at her label in the studio hosting that reaction party thing. The 3 a.m. track reaction doesn't really count because it was just like a side be. And now here we are. If you guys would like me to sit down and like fully react to this album, give this video a like if you would like to see that from me because I'm not gonna lie, 17 brand new songs is very intimidating. I feel like this album is going to be the smartest thing I've ever heard. So I could really use some support when hearing it for the first time and that's you guys. Okay, so obviously we have already talked about like the track by track prediction breakdown. I will link that video below if you haven't seen it. And also the four variant tracks. Again, I'll link it below. Today I'm specifically giving predictions for the album and then also reacting to yours that you guys submitted on Instagram. Thank you to anyone who takes the time to submit your thoughts and theories when I do things like this. I really appreciate that and hopefully we get to talk about your theory today. So I am sticking by a lot of the predictions that I've made in those previous now three videos. In particular the sonic and thematic predictions. I still do think this would most closely resemble Red with the lyricism of perhaps Folklore and Evermore. Again this could just be wishful thinking because I think those combined would be the most powerful house album of all time. Actually, no, if I was giving <laughs> real wishful thinking, it would be like a country rock hybrid, which is essentially Speak Now. <laughs> so as we know, Red, the album, is her only true breakup album. So to see a sort of continuation of that would be quite interesting, not just because it's one of my favorites, but I do think there have been things popping up that kind of lend themselves to my theory of that being quite possible. For example, during the Red era, she used the quote, all's fair in love and songwriting. And obviously that mirrors the tagline that we have for this new album, all's fair in love and poetry. Obviously, this isn't a new concept, but it definitely reminds me of Taylor's kind of view of, I don't want to say justification, but like approach to songwriting, especially when she has been hurt by someone. The interview where she gave that quote, she also said, I think that every guy who has dated me has completely known what they were signing up for. Cue Maisie Peters, you signed up for this. It was not written in the fine print. My life ends up being music. It's who I am. So at the time, and I think also now, Taylor was kind of warning the world and maybe the subject of some of the songs you signed up for this. 
this. Like you chose to date a songwriter, of course the songwriter is going to write about their experiences and that is totally valid. The same way someone that writes about their life in an autobiography, for example, or a manuscript <laughs> is going to include the people that impacted them for better or for worse. By romantically involving yourself with a songwriter, it's kind of a given. If guys don't want me to write bad songs about them, then they shouldn't do bad things. The only time that's been an issue is when I was like going through a really bad breakup with a guy and he's like, you better not write about this. And I'm like, oh, I won't. Did you? Yes. Have you ever regretted writing a song about one of your exes? Never. Never, ever, ever? No, because you don't write a song about them unless you know There's that you reason. don't really want to know them anymore. <laughs> Has any guy asked you not to write a song about him before you went on a date? Not at that point in the relationship. <laughs> Because at that point, they're thinking that, you know, I would never have any reason to write a bad song about them. And then it's when, you know, it, it, <laughs> when they start to, you know, treat me in a way that wouldn't reflect well on them in a song, if I were to be honest oh, about okay. it. Yeah. I've had a guy be like, you're not going to write about this, are you? I'm like, yeah, I am. So as well as this thematically being quite similar to Red, I'm hoping for a similar sonic landscape. And by that I mean, we know that certain people, AKA the Grammy voters and music critics, viewed the album Red as something quite sonically incohesive. The amount of times I've said that phrase on my channel, I'm so sorry. Personally, I believe, and I'm sure a lot of you would agree, that our experiences and relationships and life is not going to be cohesive. Therefore, why would an album need to be? Relationships and breakups can hold such like juxtaposition opposing emotions and feelings throughout the entire process. And that is the album Red. You know, we get the all too well, the moment I knew, the sad, beautiful, tragic, the better man. But we also get the 22, begin again, holy ground. And that is essentially my hope for the tortured poets department as well. I want Taylor to give us all of the different emotions, all of the different sides that there are to experience. And that's not only my wish, it is my prediction too. And I feel like titles like Fresh Out the Slammer, Who's Afraid of Little Old Me and Florida may even be a hint at that, that I think we can get a little bit of that playful, fun, optimistic side. <laughs> it would be very funny if we look back at this <laughs> and I'm just completely wrong. By the way, once you've watched this video, feel free to save it and come back to it in like three weeks time and see how off all of our predictions were. But before I get into all of your predictions, I just wanna give you a few more of mine first. I don't know why I think this is possible, but I'm wondering if we might get a song where Taylor does not sing the song title. Historically, this is very rare. I think we've only experienced it once with Mary's song, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I just think that would be very, very interesting. And I think if it were to happen, it might be track two, the titular track, The Tortured Poets Department, which would make it very interesting and hard for those little TikTok sounds where Taylor is singing the album name. There are no signs hinting at that, but I just think it would be very interesting. The prediction that I may be most excited to see if it is correct is that I think there might be a song about the fans, a long live 2.0, if you will. Obviously she's been writing this album for the past two years, which kind of encompasses the release of Midnight and then the Eras tour when Taylor has experienced arguably the most love and support in her life. I would not be surprised if that is reflected in a song. You know, she's experiencing arguably the peak of her career, which I feel like I say that every single year, it just keeps getting higher. Oh, my favorite neighbor is walking past. She's a little old lady and is wearing a bucket hat with marijuana on it. <laughs> and I really love her. When Taylor was in Melbourne, she said to us, you guys are the love of my life. So if I was putting money on what song it would be, it is LOML. But I guess I could also see it being, I can do it with a broken heart. I think I said in my predictions video that could be referring to the Eras tour and how she was able to like go on because she had the power of the Eras tour. And I mean, think about the adrenaline, so the dopamine and oxytocin and serotonin you get from performing and getting that energy from fans. That might've been something that powered her through a trying time. My biggest prediction for this album is that it is going to absolutely slay. It is gonna be the most insane thing she's ever written and I'm going to love it very much. <laughs> no points for me if that is correct because I think we all know it is. Now, visually, we have so few looks for this era so far. It's actually kind of killing me that we're three weeks away and we only really have like these, like the album covers and a couple of photos to go off. I think Taylor is gonna fix this very, very quickly, maybe even before this video is out. But for now, I have taken the liberty of creating a vision mood board myself for you guys of what I think the visuals may be. We did this in my Midnight's prediction video as well and I can't remember if I was like really accurate or way off, especially because the Midnight's visuals did not really match what the album ended up sounding like. So 
So there is a real possibility that this could obviously happen again for tortured poets. Like we have all these black and white depressing as hell photos. And then what if it's like an upbeat country album, you know? If this is a country album, I will reveal my album ranking here on my channel, but it's not gonna happen, so. <laughs> Now for appearances, I want to see SNL hosting and performance. What do they call that? Double duty? Whatever it is, I want Taylor doing that. I want to see her on Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, Graham Norton, she hasn't done that in a while. Is Alan Carr, Chatty Man, still doing his thing? Most importantly, I need an hour long interview with Zane Lowe. He is the only man I trust. Period. To ask the questions that I want answered. He is the man for the job. Okay, now let's get into all of your predictions. And I think we should start with the data I collected. And by that, I of course mean my Instagram polls. So I put up a question box and obviously use this picture because any excuse to use this photo shoot, I will take. My first question for the rest of the department was what genre is this album going to be? Our overwhelming majority with 59% was pop, which doesn't surprise me, I think, because Taylor is a pop star, a pop queen, a pop icon. That's what we would all expect. I think we can obviously tell she's really, really enjoying stepping into her, into her pop star era and element and like just owning <laughs> the entire pop sphere currently. Obviously the success of Midnight's lends itself to that as well. And I also wonder if some of the people that voted for pop did so because on some websites, the album has been listed as that. I will say a lot of music stores and websites that list the album aren't told the genre. <laughs> Not everybody fits in the bad bitch genre. You know, until the day it comes out. So they kind of just have a guess. So I would say if you see anything listed anywhere as like synth pop or pure pop or indie pop, take that with a grain of salt. 28% said folk. I'm gonna guess again, wishful thinking, cause don't we all want you know, a third Folkmore album, AKA Woodvale. And I think the visuals definitely could imply this. Although just because you're sad and depressed doesn't mean it can't be pop. <laughs> then we had 5% saying jazz and 7% saying rock. I love your thinking. I get it, I respect it. I do think we'll get rock Taylor before I die, but I don't think it's gonna be in this album, sadly. However, what if there is like a would've, could've, should've on this album? That to me is classified as rock. Oh my God, I would die. I would just die of happiness. I just don't think I could be so lucky in this life to get like a song on the same level as would've, could've, should've. That just feels like asking for too much. Then we said, which album will it sound the most like? 31% said Midnight's, 21% Folklore or Evermore, 21% Red, and 28% Other or Totally New. I'm inclined to actually agree with that last category. I know I've been talking about Red and Folklore, but I think I mean that more lyrically and thematically. I think Taylor is pulling something totally new out of her bag of tricks. I don't know why I get that impression. I talked about this in my previous video or the one before it, but I think because at the Eras tour, she kept mentioning how grateful she was, how much we would support her trying out a new sound and a new genre. And maybe that feels like she's priming us to do it again. You know, being like, remember how much you loved it? And I went from country to pop and gave you 1989 or from lover to folklore. <laughs> Keep that in mind because I'm about to do it again. This one is interesting. I said, which bonus track will be the favorite. The overwhelming majority, 34% have said The Black Dog. Are we just saying that because it has the most slay cover art? Maybe. Pretty close on the manuscript, The Bolter and The Albatross. Now, funnily enough, historically, the song that we hype up the most <laughs> typically ends up being the one that's like not the fan favorite. And then the reverse is true. The one that we don't get that excited for ends up being the real sleeper hit. You know, if we look at Slut for the 1989 vault, that was the song that everyone was dying to hear. And then I see everyone ranking at last. So I wonder if that will be the same with the black dog. Then I asked, will there be stories about fictional people like Taylor told us we had in Folklore and Evermore? 32% of people said yes and 68% said no. Very interesting. Obviously Folklore and Evermore are a lot more autobiographical than the term folklore would have you believe. Like it is not just all folklore. Many of the songs are in fact about Taylor's life. Now on this album, we have songs inspired by real people like Clara Bow, but it'll be interesting to see what other inspirations there are in these songs. Will But Daddy I Love Him have any actual references to The Little Mermaid. Over 10,000 of you voted in these polls. So thank you so much to everyone that contributed because I feel like that is actually a really good data set. Like we can actually kind of gather some statistical evidence <laughs> from that large of a cohort of people. So thank you. This is science that we are doing here today. Women in STEM. I have this idea for a video that I really wanna do. I don't know if I should say it now, but I love conducting research with you guys. Maybe my psychology degree and statistics courses will actually come in handy, but I wanna give you guys a full survey of like different questions. I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna ask, but then collate all of that data and like go through it with you guys in a video. Please let me know if that'd be interesting at all or if it's a terrible idea. Yeah, I think when I do it, if I do make that video, I will ask on Instagram for like what 
questions you guys would like me to ask. Anyway, I have a lot of ideas. That's just one of them. Let me know if you would like to see that at some point down the line. This will kind of get us into our first round of predictions from you guys. I asked, what will L-O-M-L stand for? Besides the obvious where it would be just love of my life. I think my interpretation is that if it was simply just love of my life, why not just write that? I think the fact that she's written it out as an acronym and also all lowercase is quite specific. Whether it is all lowercase and an acronym because she wants to diminish the meaning of it. I don't know, I just think something's going on there. So you'll remember my prediction was that she'll do a classic Taylor and kind of change the meaning throughout the song. We could begin with love of my life and then by the end of the song it has transformed to loss of my life. It could even be multiple meanings throughout the song. For example, you know, each verse uses a different acronym. Someone submitted that it could be love or my life. I was really taken aback by that one. I had to sit and just ponder that for a moment, thinking about what a song like that might do to me. Love or my life exploring the idea of this person that you love so deeply and imagined a future with, or the life that you want for yourself, having to choose between the two of those. That would be a great concept for a song. My friend Judy has submitted lumps on my lungs about the dangers of vaping. And I think that's actually the most likely answer. So thank you, Judy. And thank you, Taylor, for bringing up this important discussion. Oh, someone says like Harry Styles' love of my life. So his version, obviously, we thought would be about a person, but is in reality about a place. So Taylor could do something similar to that, where it is in fact love of my life, but has a totally different meaning. Like I said, could be about us, the fans. Also, God, Taylor and Harry have so many song titles the exact same now. We have what? Daylight, Carolina, Love of My Life, most likely, Baby Honey slash Honey Baby. I feel like I'm missing one. That just makes so much sense to me. Ooh, I love this one. Maybe it'll be hidden in the verses too, like Live Off My Love or The Lie On My Lips. This is currently my favorite theory. It's woven throughout the song in different ways. Kind of what she did with Would've, Could've, Should've, using those words throughout the song in different formats and sentences. That would in fact kill me. If you have any other alternative theories on what LOML could stand for or mean or like where the song might take, us? Let me know below. Okay, let's get into some of your predictions. Songs like Hits Different, Upbeat and Gut Wrenching. God, I hope so. That is possibly my favorite genre of song. You could probably tell that from my God tier ranking of every Taylor Swift song, but I just really love a depressive, sad lyric with the most upbeat sound that I can really get down to. Hits different, the very first night, message in a bottle, death by a thousand cuts, Cornelia Street, even would have, could have, should have, forever and always, treacherous heartbreak songs where you can just shake your ass a little bit. That's where it's at. Could potentially win album of the year again. So this scares me actually. It scares me to be still. It's terrifying, yeah how quickly we are getting a new album from her so soon after the Grammys gone by where not only did Taylor win album of the year, but like did so in a historical manner where she broke a record, you know, and now holds a record that no one else has ever done. It makes me wonder if the Academy, is that who votes, right? The Academy? Am I thinking of movie awards? It's a Grammy Academy, right? Anyway, if the voters will be less likely, less inclined to give her this esteemed award again because they just gave it to her. Even though Midnight's and Poets are coming out like two calendar years apart, this is Taylor's first ever spring album release, putting it only one year later in the Grammy cycle. So it is very soon after and I don't know how that will impact their view on her or this album and like wanting to award it to her. Will it be worthy? Yeah, absolutely. Will they give it to her? Who knows? Curious to see if she uses blue again in lyrics, but dives more into his depression or hers. My friend and I are making a bingo sheet of like references and words and phrases that we think will be on the album. And blue is definitely on there. Blue. Oh damn, if I seen that color blue. Oh shit, blue eyes. Deep blue, but you painted me golden. the way that Taylor has used that color to, you know, refer to mental illness, sadness, depression, grief. For an album like this, feels like a no brainer. We've already had glimpses of Taylor reflecting on others' mental states and experiences on songs like If you cascade ocean wave blues come He seems fine most of the time Forcing smiles and never minds You cry but you 
As well as obviously her own in my face was gray but you wouldn't admit that we were sick never take advice from someone who's falling apart when my depression works the graveyard shift off when i was drowning that's when i could finally breathe they told me all of my cages were mental i got wasted like all my potential Since July Drunk as they watch my shattered edges Listen Cut off My nose just despite my face I would definitely very safely bet that there will be references or maybe entire songs on this album that reflect on Taylor's own mental state throughout this period of two years. Possibly both highs and lows, but I think we will get a very raw, honest look into what her mental state has looked like. More raw and honest than even Folklore and Evermore, I think. It will be better across the board than Midnight's, but do less numbers. I find that interesting that you think it will do less numbers. We could theorize that because so far we haven't really seen any promotion for it, but I do think that will happen in the upcoming weeks. I would guess, given Taylor's level of fame now compared to the Midnight's era, in my eyes, she's only gotten bigger because Midnight's and then the Era's tour like catapulted her to even higher levels of fame that this is gonna break records. <laughs> I remember being in the studio when Midnight's came out and even just within a few hours, she's <laughs> broken records. Like she's, these are numbers they had never seen before. And I fear the same may happen again. In particular, I saw this post that said, the Tortured Poets Department is now expected to become the first album to sell over 1 million vinyl copies in its first week since Michael Jackson's Bad in 1987. It sold more copies than 1989 TV with 19 days left. So if promotion ramps up in the next few weeks, which I suspect it will, I think this is going to be big. I think we are truly witnessing an artist and pop star so much bigger than we initially understood. And I really don't think her impact on the music industry in terms of inspiration, but also like charts and numbers and sales and streams will be properly understood until we are reflecting back on this time. Obviously people during Michael Jackson's era or the Beatles or Madonna or Britney Spears, like they knew at the time what a force those people were. But now a few decades later, that time period is really synonymous with those artists and groups. And naturally I think Taylor is that for, well, the 2010s and the 2020s so far at least. And I think there are no signs of slowing. Well, I have a pretty crazy Taylor Swift charts update this morning that is happening right before the release of the Tortured Poets Department. Using the Chartmaster's methodology, which takes into account every metric of music consumption, Taylor Swift is now the second most consumed female artist in history. Now she is only behind Madonna. Here is the remainder of the top 10, and I cannot believe that I am saying this, but Taylor Swift is going to surpass Madonna in lifetime units sometime in 2025. And every time that we talk about this, there will be people in my comments saying, oh, it's easier now because of streaming, it's easier now for XYZ. We know that's not true. If you don't want to take my word for it, take billboards. Because of our current media landscape, it is actually much harder to achieve and then maintain fame. There is no advantage. In fact, there's a pretty big disadvantage, which makes this achievement all the sweeter. Audible gasps will be heard around the world, just like the first time we heard You're Losing Me. Oh yes, this, I, I absolutely agree with this take, and I think we can all safely agree that these lyrics are going to destroy us. I do really fear that some of these lyrics are gonna be way too smart for me. Taylor would have made an incredible English professor because of just like her big brain, her, her use of words astounds me. And so I need to spend the next few weeks expanding my vocabulary. I don't doubt that there will be another compilation video of like YouTubers reacting to that line in X song because she's gonna come for our throats. We know that. The bonus tracks are sisters and are going to tell a story. That would be interesting. I did find it quite fascinating that all of our bonus tracks are sort of the same format. The something. The albatross. The Bolta, the manuscript, the black dog. Proud of myself for remembering those. My memory is not great these days. <laughs> is that in fact a clue that these songs will have something in common, whether sonically or thematically? Will there be like a story woven throughout them all? That would be very interesting. I would love to see that from Taylor. Kind of like the teenage love triangle. How interesting would it be if all of the bonus tracks connected in some way? Ooh. 
I hope you're right about that one. I think this will be her most honest album yet with zero love songs. I agree with the first part. This will be her most honest album yet, but I think we are gonna get love songs. Maybe not in the way that we expect. Even on Taylor's most strict concept albums, there, there is always room to explore multiple sides of that. So for some reason, I feel like we might get love songs, even if it is a self-love song or a song about moving on or reflecting on the beginning of a relationship. I think there will be something in there. The Tortured Poets Department song will take a satirical outlook similar to blank space. I would love this. I think I could see it being similar to also anti-hero, like reflecting on that, making fun of herself. To me, it makes the most sense in terms of how that phrase or concept could be used because like, it's such a clunky word. <laughs> we all know what it is likely inspired by. So this would be interesting to see if it is in fact a satirical outlook or even like self-referential. I think it's also possible that the smallest man who ever lived could be self-referential. I know that's probably very naive of me to say when it's, it's like one or two men that it more likely could be about, but what if that was a song like The Man or Antihero, you know, a self-reflection kind of moment. I don't think that's true, but we'll see. But Daddy I Love Him will have country vibes. Girl, you are just as delusional as I am and I love you for that, but I hope you guys can hear the thunder because it's kind of beautiful right now. I feel kind of lucky that if this album is as depressing as it looks, here in Australia, we are lucky that we will be going into winter and it feels like just the right vibe for this kind of album. Cozy listening in our blankets by the fireplace, storming outside. If But Daddy I Love Him is a country song, I will send you $100 personally <laughs> because I am putting that money on the line. Truly nothing would make me happier. I wonder if your brain is thinking of Daddy Lessons by Beyonce and the Chicks, which is one of the greatest country songs of all time. Side note, can we talk about Beyonce's new album? Oh my God, the Miley collaboration, the Dolly Parton of it all, just so good. I'm not okay. Guilty as Sin is gonna be the cuntiest song ever. I fear you might be right about that one. It is giving me vigilante shit vibes. It could also be kind of like Carolina vibes. Guilty as sin. Do we think that Taylor is the guilty one in this song or is she like judging and condemning someone else who is guilty as sin? Oh my gosh. I would also love if we got <laughs> like biblical references in this song. Pointus Pilate. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, Pilate. Is he the inventor of Pilates? Sin is in the title. So if this is anything like would have, could have, should have, which alluded to like her religious trauma and experience breaking down those religious ideals and that whole motif, that song would rank very high for me. My friend and I talk about how sometimes you can hear a song for the first time all over again. It is such an honor and privilege when that happens because you can't predict if it's gonna happen. You have no idea when it might happen to you. And guys, this morning, I'm so excited to share this. I heard would have, could have, should have for the first time again. And what an experience that was. It is truly like you hear the song and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> Does anyone know this song? It's so good. I've had it happen with My Tears Ricochet and I think I've had it with August as well, but it can happen truly with any song at any moment. Let me know if this happens to you or at least if you know what I'm talking about. It's not like you didn't appreciate the song before or like hadn't heard it properly because obviously would have, could have, should have is my favorite song ever. It's just like you hear it again for the first time. I know some of you will get what I mean, but I was just re-experiencing what an incredible song that is. Like stained glass windows in my mind floored me all over again. God rest my soul. I miss who I used to be. The tomb won't close. Stained glass windows in my mind. I regret you all the time. Can you guys hear that rain? If you can, I hope it's in a nice way because it is really, really coming down out there. Kind of nice. When I hear or think of the title Guilty as Sin, I think of this Taylor. And is that not the definition of cunty? <laughs> It will have a short song of like 40 seconds. That would be very interesting. I love, is it called an interlude? A little mini song? I love an interlude. My favorite little mini song is probably The Valley, which opens Betty Who's album, The Valley. If you guys haven't heard it, go and check it out. But also let me know your favorite little mini song or interlude because they are just so fun. I'm probably forgetting another favorite, but I think that would be very fun for Taylor to do. I feel like those make the most sense when they are the opening of an album. It kind of has to set the tone for the album. So it really has to be the first song. And I I don't think the collaboration with Post Malone is gonna be like a 40 second song. I think that's gonna be a full pop, maybe country because Posty has gone country lately. I think that's gonna be a full production song and I think he will have a full verse. You no, know, it's gonna be the regular formula of Taylor verse, Taylor chorus, guest appearance verse, combined chorus, bridge, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If one of the songs were to be only 40 seconds long, which song would you guess that it would be? As long as it's deep voice Taylor, I'm here for it. So true, my friend. I want that silky smooth maroon 
deep voice Taylor and I want that forever. Imagine if it was an opera album. I don't even know why the aesthetic just fits. Look, you're not wrong, especially the Grammys outfit, which I guess is the only outfit we have so far from this album. Imagine if it was like The Greatest Showman where they're like, oh my God, it's this opera singer. Like she's known for singing opera. It's all about opera. And then she comes and it's just, she sings a pop song. <laughs> It's so stupid. I love that movie so much. Will her 13th album be the last? This is a question that I actually get submitted a lot when I do videos like this. My personal answer is absolutely not. I think anyone that knows Taylor knows she is the happiest when she is creating. I'm making more albums at a more rapid pace than I ever did before because I think the more art you create, hopefully the less pressure you put on yourself. Recently, I've found that the more things I make, the more things I make and the happier I am. Yeah. And everybody's different and and there are people who put an album out every, you know, 5 years and it's brilliant and that's the way that they work. And there's I have full respect for that, but I am happier when I'm making things more more often. <laughs> Therefore, creating albums is like what brings her joy in life. It is her purpose and her meaning. Even if she were to slow down or produce fewer albums, AKA, <laughs> you know, the regular amount that most artists do, which is like one every two years. And Taylor's been doing six every two years at this point. I don't see a world where Taylor Swift is ever not creating, whether that is songwriting for other artists, for herself, for movies. I just think she'll always be making things which is so great for me. I really hitched my horse to the right wagon in like 2006 when I heard this little country singer because boy have I been well fed ever since and I think I will continue to be very very well fed for a long time. I know people say like oh she's in her 30s now which is like career death for women but I think Taylor like a lot of stars before her is going to break that mold and continue to do what she does best which is write songs and release banger albums. I don't know why but I kind of think it might have something in common with Ocean Boulevard. It gives a similar vibe. I have to admit when I read this, <laughs> my brain thought of Ocean Avenue and I was like, But I think Ocean Boulevard is a Lana Del Rey album. Is that right? As someone that knows like 1% of Lana Del Rey songs, this has gone over my head. But I wanted to share it for anyone else that knows Lana because I know a lot of you guys love Lana. I honestly would not be surprised. I predict a large need for therapy after this album drops. Yeah, I think we need to line up a better help sponsorship for my future poets videos because we're all gonna need it. And no, you know what? I actually think the album is the therapy for Taylor, but also hopefully for us. You're Losing Me was a spiritual experience. I think I released a lot of emotion when I reacted to that. And I'm sure that's gonna happen again with these songs, but I welcome it. I fear the merch will be ugly. Look, it is a reasonable prediction to have, but I actually think this album and this era has the potential to be the most stunning and gorgeous and beautiful merch that we've ever seen. The concept of this and kind of the little glimpses we've seen so far, I definitely see the vision and I have created a few things in my mind to share with you guys. UMG, if you're watching, feel free to take these ideas. I'll give them to you for free. Obviously in America, this is being released as a spring album. However, I'm choosing to ignore that because for me, we're going into winter. As you heard from the rain, it's already cold and depressing here. So I want a big cozy blanket. If the album is as depressing as the visuals so far are implying, I need a blanket to curl up with by the fireplace while I'm pretending to be a poet and write in my little journal. Bouncing off that, we need journals and we need nice ballpoint pens. Releasing stationery and what do we call books? Cause they're not stationery. <sighs> I was gonna say haberdashery, but that's like, it's like yarn and stuff, right? What are books and pens called? Journals. Anyway, we need journals, we need diaries, we need planners, and we need stationery. I think beautiful ballpoint pens and inspiring people to write their own poetry coincides so well with this era. Don't you guys just love a good pen? I'm looking around my room right now and I don't have a single good pen. So best believe if they wanted to release some cool pens, I will buy one. Let's actually settle a debate. Do you guys prefer black pens or blue pens? I like to write with a blue pen. It just feels cuter and like this is why I don't wear black because like it's such a harsh dark color writing in blue just feels a little bit more upbeat and colorful that's my own issue I need to work on let me know how you feel I think the obvious answer here is also a cardigan a tortured poet a cardigan it just goes hand in hand it just works I think it could honestly be very similar to the folklore cardigan given how many people missed out on that and would happily buy that if it were re-released let's make another one similar to the folklore cardigan but jazzed up a little bit maybe this one even has little pockets put a little notepad and pen in I can't believe I'm giving these ideas away for free, honestly. And finally, for specifically for the track So Long London, I need to see those slouchy, thin, <laughs> 
muscle tanks with the Union Jack on them from like 2010 Tumblr era. Let's give that a comeback, shall we? Imagine she released like really cliche poet things like a beret. This feels too expensive and elaborate to do, but a little quill and ink pot. <laughs> And maybe even like a scroll feather. What, what do we call them? Quill songs? Quill pen songs? Quill pen songs, right? I will say for merch, even if it is ugly, don't fear. There is so much cute fan made merch already. What are we missing in terms of merch? I think if vinyls and cassette tapes weren't already so huge in like the music industry, this album would be the perfect comeback time for those. I'm really still in my Dead Poet Society era. So I'm thinking like big woolen coats and like heavy knits and books. <laughs> and I don't want to think about what happens at the end of that movie because wow, just such a happy, feel good, uplifting movie that is. <laughs> you know what? I think some really cute jewelry would be nice. I could see like some gold necklaces or some earrings. That feels tortured poetsy to me. Well, now it's up to you guys. What merch would you ideally like to see for the tortured poets department? And what do you think we will get? Do you think we're gonna get a merch drop like any day now? Or will it all be after the album comes out? I'm gonna guess that there might even be something dropped before I put this video out. So this is a real time capsule of where we're at currently. I'm gonna end on this submission because the typo just made me giggle so much. I'm actually not gonna read it out. I'm just gonna let you read it. God bless the person that submitted that and they're autocorrect on their phone probably. Thank you for making my day. Thank you guys for sitting and chatting with me today for all of your submissions. I truly appreciate it. I have so much fun reading all of these and I can't wait to see if any of them are true. I'm so excited that we are finally in release month. It is slowly sinking in that we are about to get a new Taylor Swift album but it still hasn't really fully hit me. Yeah, stick around, subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye! Is this what it feels like?